Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And today we have a special guest, Miriam Lynch, CEO of Diversity and Aquatics, is joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to join each and every one of you. Awesome. So let's get right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and Diversity and Aquatics. Yeah, um, we'll start with my swimming journey. It's a little uh, non-traditional in the fact that I am from a military family. Um, and so I learned to swim in Saudi Arabia. So Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. The coolest place to be was at the pool. Um, <laughs> and I credit a lot to my family, especially my mother, um, who for us, drowning has been a part of her oldest brother drowned um, his senior year in high school. And instead of her making it a fear, she empowered us to learn how to swim. And while we were in Saudi Arabia, you know, it was unavoidable. She just said, you know, what we're going to do is you're going to take swim lessons. And from that, it blossomed into me being a part of the swim team at four years old. And then it blossomed even more so because I was a military child to be my family wherever I went around the world. So whether it be we moved to Rhode Island at one point, it was always the swim team that was my connection to the community, whether it was in Germany, that was my connection to um, meeting people before you start that first day of school. Swim, being a part of the swim team was always part of that connection. Um, later on, we settled here in the Washington, D.C. area. And um, as many that's, many people in the military do to work at the Pentagon or at headquarters, and I had the opportunity to join in with um, back then, which was Curl Burke, but now mm -hmm. Nation's mm -hmm. Capital under the tutelage of Pete Morgan, one of a, a great swim coach. Um, from there, I had a lot of exposure with my family. We went up, we have family from Philadelphia. So I got to train summers with Jim Ellis, with PDR, um, go down to Pinecrest um, and swim with um, Pinecrest for a, a little bit. So I had a lot of international exposure and exposure to great coaches um, during my swimming career. And then it came to the time to choose where I wanted to go to college. And for me, um, to find out how a university, um, a division one historically black college and university right up the street had a swim and dive team that was um, pretty, it was a really strong team uh, right up the street. So it was one of those natural things like, yes, that's where I want to go. I felt at home, that magic spot when you go to college, like this is where I want to be. Got to swim at Howard. And um, from Howard, uh, everything blossomed even more. Um, had an opportunity to swim with some great people from around the world at Howard, Nigeria, the Bahamas, um, all over. And then once I graduated um, from there, I went into business. I went into the business world. And um, from that, it was, I was missing something. I was so ingrained in swimming from being with some great coaches, a training under Pete Morgan. He, you really become a student under him in that kind of practice. And I was missing that in the business world. And when I moved back home um, at, a, at a point, I said, you know, I really still want to start coaching again. And during that time, that's when I came across the organization Diversity in Aquatics um, with that was started by Jason Jackson and Dr. Shan, Sean Anderson, just as a network. It started off as a network where swimmers could meet each other from across the country. They can have an opportunity to um, to say, hey, I'm in the D.C. area. I'm a scuba diver. I'm a swimmer. I'm a triathlete and connect. And it was truly a network. Um, but actually it turned into a mission because a lot of us were finding out more data on the disparity that is in our sport, um, not only in our sport, but of all of aquatics. So for me, while I was coaching, there was a drowning here in DC of a four-year-old girl. And I was coaching at the time and it was the, the network that helped us to do, um, connect the competitive swimming side to all the opportunities in aquatics. So for us, it was, we wanted to help a community heal. We partnered with DC Parks and Recs, um, Potomac Valley Swimming, and had a water safety festival um, here in DC. And with that, we were addressing how to be water safe, um, exposure to different aquatic programming. I'm so grateful for the scuba divers, the Metro Harbor police came in, 
the um, Triathletes Association came in, and all of us working together to help a community heal, and then also help a community to have a positive connection to the water after a tragic event. Um, and all of us cre creating this multi-sectoral approach. And that became kind of for us, that was the momentum with diversity in aquatics, not just that events, but events like that happening across the country that have served as a foundation for us as we are today as an organization, that we're a network to help save lives. And that's where we lay at. Um, but we understand that there's some things that we have to address beforehand um, to get to the saving lives part. We know there's historical um, factors, there's uh, societal, there's economic. We know there's so many things, barriers that get to this part. And we also help a part addressing that. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's a great overview. Uh, a lot to unpack there. Uh, maybe some of the things right there at the end that you mentioned, uh, the awareness, like people don't know what they don't know. M maybe tell us a little bit about some things that would maybe surprise people. Yeah, so a lot of times when we talk about water safety awareness is that we wait till we go to the pool to make that happen. And a lot of it is before we get to the pool. If, if an audience isn't affiliated and feeling inclusive to the pool environment and only the messages uh, reciprocated in that environment, we're not, we're not expanding from there um, the importance of learning to swim. So what we have done is we celebrate each year International Water Safety Day and we go into schools. We go into youth groups. We partner with non-aquatic based groups um, to help spread that message because that awareness piece is so important to go outside. It's, it's um, to go outside of that space to make sure everybody has the information or everyone has access. That's what we believe in. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned it, International Water Safety Day. Let's let's get into that a little bit more. Tell us about it and what how have you seen that progress over the years? It has progressed immensely. When we first partnered to do International Water Safety Day, so International Water Safety Day for us, um, let me backtrack, is a partnership that we have, Diversity in Aquatics with the International Water Safety Foundation. For us, we wanted to be a call to action organization that was a part of the bigger messaging um, towards that awareness. So we partnered with them. Um, our first few years, we were doing really well. We had two major school systems that were celebrating it with us, um, mine included, because I'm a full-time teacher, and then down in Broward County, we're a part of it, um, to spread it. Uh, since then, we've partnered with organizations such as the American Red Cross, um, the Zach Foundation, and many more to help expand that effort. And the whole premise is that you sign up through the each of our members sign up through the um, International Water Safety Foundation website and somebody can, you can order stickers. There's curriculum there. There are a number of resources from other organizations such as um, American Red Cross to do whales, tails and more. And the whole premise is take it as your own. Um, I've heard stories of scuba divers going into schools and doing like a broadcast on the morning news and wearing their scuba gear mm -hmm. and then coming to see them in the library and kids having a great positive affiliation with the water, right, of discovery. Um, I'll tell you my own story at our own, at my school of Lake Braddock is that we celebrated it and we had a fire drill that same day. Oh, wow. And it was incredible to see all the kids come out with their stickers and talk about aquatics at school during the fire drill. Like, oh, what's that sticker you're wearing? Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm a lifeguard. Oh, you're a lifeguard at which pool? I'm a lifeguard at this pool. Or, hey, guess what? I don't know how to swim. And this conversation of a student, they weren't in my class, were in front of me and said, you know, I don't know how to swim. And the friend said, hey, come to my pool. I we will help you get to swim. You should know how to swim. And kids having that conversation with kids about that aspect. And so that's what uh, we do every May 15th. Um, we've reached a million people each year and we hold it annually. So hopefully people can get involved and be a part of it. That's awesome. And of course, we'll be linking information in the description of this video so everyone can check that out. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about diversity in aquatics. I know there's a lot of different moving parts uh, regularly, you know, putting out information and running different things. Tell us about some of those. 
Yeah, so Diversity in Aquatics, we are a, we've been in existence for more than 10 years, but uh, we've gone through 10 years of holding our annual convention, which is one of our main parts. We wanted a way for people to connect and to be able to network and find out best practices across the world um, about how to do water safety awareness and then how do we create those opportunities in aquatics. So that's one of our main things. We've done that um, for the last 10 years. This year, we are partnering with AOAP, the Association of Aquatic Professionals, which we are very honored to have a partnership with uh, to host it in Reno, Nevada this February 18th through the 20th. Um, so that's one of our big things. But also for us at Diversity in Aquatics and our 2000 members, we want to create um, and share information. So we have every year, we have, um, or every month we have going on our webinar series uh, where we have each of our aquatic councils have an opportunity to talk about their aquatic area um, and dive deeper into what's happening in that aquatic area. So coming up in uh, next month, we have the triathlon council that is um, teaming up with a number of grassroots triathlon groups that are talking about triathlons 101. Um, and what I've realized and learned from our tri group is that there are so many, tri is a great bridge builder um, into swimming. And so we have those things coming up along with our partnerships, such as My Swim Pro is a part of us. Um, we're so excited. Matter of fact, I have a new Apple Watch, have the app, <laughs> ready to go swim. <laughs> so we have so many things going on um, that check our website. We actually have a new website launching. Check our, our social media to see all the different things that we have going on for us as an organization. Yeah, that's awesome. And so for someone who maybe wants to get involved, like where do you guys uh, see the biggest need for support and, and where you can really amplify things? Yeah, so for us, we are 100% volunteer organization. Even as executive director, I all everything that we raise um, goes right back into our learn to swim programming, um, goes back into internet, us and being able to supply the stickers, the curriculum, send all the things out for International Water Safety Day. Um, we're always looking for volunteers to help with those efforts, especially as we get closer to those days. We're always looking for help with our conventions. And then how somebody can get involved if they like to help with those things and more um, is become a member and then email us. Um, we have actually a membership meeting, an all membership meeting coming up this Thursday, where we will start to, you'll get an introduction to who we are even more so, and then our updates for where we are currently, as well as you'll be able to break out into our aquatic councils, who will tell you even more so where you could be a part of that council and what initiatives they have going on. Yeah, that's great. Just so important to get involved if you're interested. Uh, tell us about like the vision for the future right now, because you're in the position where you, you sort of have all of the pieces coming together and it's been 10 years plus of the organization, like 10 years from now, you know, what is your vision for the future of just the, the industry and diversity of, of aquatics? Um, I think we are at a cusp where we're seeing a, sh a shift in the narrative. Um, for aquatics right now is that we are starting to connect it to not just a leisure and a privilege for some versus others, is, but as a necessity as a part of life. Mm -hmm. Because we know um, what has happened historically to do uh, separate, um, to create uh, barriers in this space. But there's a lot of research that's starting to come out to all the benefits of aquatics. That's not just about the competitive side um, where it's starting to reduce those barriers. Um, there are, you see nowadays, uh, the other day there was a post by Dwayne Wade and his mom learning to swim at 60 years old awesome. and how she talks about it. And then yeah. we start to see it's a part of aquatic therapy because you're seeing LeBron James online. And he's like, yeah, you know, during COVID I'm in my pool doing, you know, resistance training in the water, which has a different mindset on where we see our affiliation with the water. Um, so I think that narration is changing and a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I do use the water this way. I do feel the water this way, um, towards changing that narrative for us in diversity and aquatics. And that vision is to carry that out. We see it as not only just saving lives is the important, and we, we come at it as an empowering message. Um, we know what the statistics are. We know where the disparities are. 
But what we do with our messaging is making sure that we're empowering communities um, to create change and understand the strong history that we have as pearl divers, as um, aquatics being a part of life, a part of culture, um, and understanding what was done to create a separate, um, to separate us from that. And then also to highlight the possibilities, not only to be a swimmer, but to be, once you learn how to swim, you could be a water polo player, you could be a sea captain, you can um, have fun on the canoes. There's so many things that can be affiliated with the water in a positive way. There you have it, folks. Aquatics, it's not just swimming back and forth in a pool. It could be water polo, pearl diving, scuba diving. And I think what you mentioned about it being a life skill above everything else, yes, there's the great physical elements and fitness and, and good health, but it's a life skill. So this is fundamentally something that everyone at every level should have access to. Um, and so I guess the final, com any final comments, if you were to you know, pitch someone, hey, you know what, you really need to be getting involved or a parent that they're not really sure about getting their kid involved in swimming, you know, here's your chance to, to tell them what they need to do. Um, yeah, so if anybody's looking to get involved, the best thing to do is connect to your local group, connect to us, find out information, share that information. Uh, feel free to email me. I'm, I'm on email. I might be opening Pandora's, but I, am, I love to email and connect people together. If it's not me, then we probably have a member who's doing an awesome project in your area. So uh, get involved, um, spread the words. Um, that is the best thing we can do each other to help each other save lives. You heard it. That's amazing. And I totally agree. I mean, there's so much that has been done that we can still do to teach this life skill and get more people access and to make sure everything is well represented. So uh, there you have it, folks. Uh, Miriam Lynch, CEO of Diversity in Aquatics. We'll make sure we link all of the information in the description below on not only Diversity in Aquatics, but also International Water Safety Day and also World Swim Day. So we're really excited to be partnered with you guys and wishing you all the best of success uh, in the coming year and beyond. Yes, thank you so much.